started we started to move service times and mm -hmm. so moving mm -hmm. from the 815 to the 8 yeah and that's helped and i can actually see parking spaces yeah available, there you go pretty cool yeah so. if you're unaware we did uh, recently change a service and you probably if you've watched online for a long time you've noticed that our eight o'clock is no longer streaming because it's a little early for it maybe is. an online audience, it but is. then also um, we've moved to permanently 8 a.m. services. Yeah, so 945 is our only stream from now on. We're excited about that. Uh, have everyone in one place. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, Scott, real quick before we dive into some things, yep. um, talk to me about who Scott Harrop is mm. fundamentally at the core. Oh, no, wow. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going deep on this. Yeah, what's your, yeah. what's your core belief? I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like just kind of what I do here. Yeah, yeah. So, what you do here, maybe where you're from. Yeah, so the I land grew, of potatoes. Grew up in Topeka, yeah. Kansas. Um, and interestingly enough, uh, the, the name Topeka, it actually means a good place to dig potatoes. Mm. And uh, then God brought us where they actually grow potatoes, yeah. which actually makes sense because there's not a lot of potatoes grown. Yeah, I actually didn't think Kansas would be. No, it's not. No, it's, okay. it's a wheat state, a corn oh, state. Yeah, good to know. Good to know. Yeah. Okay, well, ministry life, you, mm -hmm. you ended up here. Uh, what do you do here? Yeah. Uh, so my role is the executive pastor, yes. so I get to, to work with all of our staff um, and our mm -hmm. ministry teams, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, I get to work on staff development, yeah. And yeah. Got ministry alignment, it's and great. a lot of hiring, and yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, Scott's awesome, and uh, yeah, so we like to take some time real quick. Let's have some fun. Yeah. Are you ready? Uh, let's do it. Your first movie you've ever saw in theaters, Ooh. and what year was it? <laughs> So, <laughs> I grew up in a really conservative church, and so we yeah. didn't really go to movies mm. a lot. Um, and and uh, so, 1982, I think, nice. is the first I went to a movie. Uh, yeah. And I can't remember if it was either E.T. or Tootsie. Um, and probably shouldn't watch Tootsie. I, I don't even... I, yeah, I don't yeah you were, what, what nine-ish? Yeah, it, I don't think it was an appropriate move for a nine-year-old. Um, but, you know, yeah. so we went from no movies to inappropriate movies. Yeah, there great. you go. Mm -hmm. oh, and then yeah. E.T., phone yeah, home. E.T., phone home, yep. Mm -hmm. And then yep. your first concert. Uh, I, it was with my parents, <laughs> and uh, we went to go see Kenny Rogers. Yeah, yeah. so what I've learned from that mm -hmm. your parents were awesome <laughs> they, <laughs> uh, we'll say classic right yeah and uh, I mean, she might be watching right she, now. she could be she you got to know when to hold yeah. them and uh, you got to know when to fold them yes and you got to know when to walk away and know when to run so Dude, that's awesome that's what yeah. i learned from my parents so Good. yeah we're, we're normal people we like to call ourselves real stinking people so you know Tootsie and Kenny Rogers. Yeah, yeah. That's our executive pastor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, no. So let's talk through this weekend, man. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun. It has. Um, what, have you, what have you seen in service? Mm -hmm. What have you loved about it? All that stuff. Yeah. I mean, just this whole concept and idea of being mm -hmm. found, yeah. uh, which is what uh, Keith will walk through today. Yeah. And uh, it's just a, it's a very impactful just thought and remembering who we are and more importantly, yeah. whose we are. And yeah. uh, just that idea that that we are lost and we need to be found. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so it's such a great and message. You're gonna enjoy it, it yeah. it's so, so good. And so if you're watching online and maybe you've uh, been invited to church and maybe didn't make it here and you just decided to tune in online, thank you for even taking the time to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. We really appreciate that. We hope that you feel welcome. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot going on around Rock Harbor these days. Uh, what, what's exciting to you right now? I mean, we got a lot going on. We got a half-built building on the side we of do. us. Yeah. yeah, so we're adding on phase two currently, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. which is about 44,000 square feet. Um, there's going to be a, a large space, so middle school can actually meet on a Sunday yeah. as opposed to a Sunday afternoon. They'll be able yeah. to meet during probably the 1 and the 5 yeah. uh, p.m. services. And, and then 16 community group rooms. And, you know, for many, it's like, oh, they're group yeah. rooms. But, man, we, we think about mm -hmm. what will happen in those rooms. Yeah. And that's what gets yeah. exciting, the conversations that will take place with middle school students and high school students and young adults and adults. And uh, so we're just excited to get that completed. Yeah. And then there is also this one thing called staff offices. Yeah, we'd that love I think to do that. some of the staff's excited about. We, we currently, this lobby is where the staff currently kind of hangs out. And yeah. there's a couple of places we tuck away, but we have no yeah. offices yeah. with uh, 73 people on staff, which is interesting. Kind of wild. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And so if you happen to be driving by one day and you like take a look at over what's happening at that church, there's a lot, and it's a good thing. And, and we know that maybe there, if you are watching for the first time, it's intimidating to walk into a building like this. We hope that you do feel welcome. We yes. hope that you maybe one day take have that courage to come on campus, walk around, and, and uh, stop by the Info Center, which is right behind us. It's a great spot mm -hmm. to meet Scott, anybody. Uh, yeah. Our adult ministries team would love to help you uh, integrate in our church as easy as possible. Uh, and, and honestly, if you come in and you just have questions, we'd be happy to sit down with over a coffee or whatever and just have those conversations and we know that there are actually this is a cool thing we've been talking about behind the scenes a little is there are pockets of people watching church yes, together absolutely and so we'd love to know if that's you yeah. and we've we heard a, we've heard a few rumors of mm -hmm. and you know we'd love to know if you want to dm us or let us know that'd be great but 
we're excited and also our next series coming up yes. intentional mm -hmm. uh the kind of the idea being uh life's too short to live it on to not live it on purpose yeah. and so we're taking a look at a lot of cool things that are happening in mm -hmm. life and uh, i think this is something i'm throwing this on you last yeah. minute right here love it but over the last couple of years i found you like you've been very intentional with adult kids mm -hmm. talk to me about what what that's been like why and all that stuff I think you um, you don't think about that the, the launch stage you know mm -hmm. a lot and for my wife and I like when that starts to happen you're like man okay our mm -hmm. kids are in college that's great yeah um, but like what happens after that yeah and then how do you how do you continue to connect with yeah. your young adult children as they leave the nest yeah. and you know for for us we really wanted to have independent kids mm -hmm. that were can, can do it on that's their cool. own and, and so yeah. um, as of like as of tomorrow, both of our kids will be fully on their own financially. Whoa! Uh, off the paybook, <laughs> off the payroll, and so you like, just got a raise. We did. Uh, pretty exciting, <laughs> and and so it's like, this is yeah. it. And so to see that, and so we're we're just in this yeah. season of how do we continue to connect with them? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I just spent. Uh, for Christmas this year, we completely switched it up. We yeah. said, no more presents. You, you get experiences with your parents. Yeah. Well, and they loved it. And uh, cool. I, I got to sit and watch 10 games of college basketball yeah. with my son a couple weeks ago. Sweet. Um, watching the Big 12 tournament. And yeah. what an experience. And my, Of which I thought Iowa State would take it all, but that didn't work. Our team did not do well. Yeah. But we realized, man, it's who you're sitting next to and maybe not what you're watching. Yeah. Oh, that's really good, man. And so, that, I mean, that's kind of the heart behind this next series is that, you know, we're in different phases of life. Absolutely. And, and honestly, Scott's been a great resource in my life to, you know, learn from things that you wish maybe did differently. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. And uh, I've like gone like, OK, well, I have young kids. Yeah. So how do I be intentional with mm -hmm. that? And then also we look into relationships and your marriage yeah. and all that stuff. So our hope is that tonight or today you come to church and you maybe feel like, OK, I need to get this rhythm back mm -hmm. in my life, mm -hmm. maybe for the first time. Yeah. And uh, and then that you would return next week to a highly practical, intentional series Absolutely. to where you can maybe see some rhythms and things change in your life. What would you say to somebody who is maybe thinking of attending church for the first time? Yeah, I think with this next series, it's the it's like the perfect time yeah. to start. Right. Yeah. And that's that is actually intentional. Yeah. Uh, wow. We think about that, like, how do we lo how do we take that step? Right. And, mm -hmm. and I kind of make sure I'm prioritizing the yeah. things that I, I say I want to prioritize. Yeah. Because, man, life just hits us, Dude. doesn't it? It yeah, just hits crazy. us, and, and we don't, don't realize. And, and so, like, us being prepared for that yeah. is so important. Yeah. And it's when you walk into something and you feel like you're, you're ready for it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's great. You know, yeah. and it's kind of like investments. If you don't, you, you, don't, you don't get a return unless you actually make the investment, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And yeah. so you got to take that step. And this That's is a good. great great opportunity to maybe take that investment, yeah. take that step, and yeah. then you see the return on the back end. Yeah. And that's what we're yeah. always looking for. Yeah, again, so we just want to reiterate, maybe you're watching online just because someone invited you. Thanks mm -hmm. for tuning in. If you're watching on vacation or, hey, you're like, you know, Easter, it's a great family time. We want to spend some time together. Uh, thanks for still tuning in. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you. We do have uh, a little bit of the overflow seating mm -hmm. being it is. set up. It's happening. There are a lot of yeah. people here today, which there is are. really, really cool. And, and if you maybe are a believer, if you want to be praying for services today, that's Absolutely. that's incredible. Yeah. But if you are here just to hang out, um, please feel welcome. Yes. And know that you can DM us, ask us any questions, and we'd be happy to help in any way that we can. But, Scott, we need to get them into church. Yeah. So we want to thank it. you for hanging out with me. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, watch E.T. today in honor of Scott. Oh, maybe. my goodness. Yeah, maybe not. I've actually never seen that movie. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I just know you're supposed to phone home. That's it. So That's anyways. what it's about. Well, happy Easter. He is risen. Uh, Which one are you going to say? As he said he would. Ooh, good one. Yes. All right. Happy Easter, guys. We want to get you into church. Thanks for being here. See, See you later. later. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. How we doing? Happy Easter. Hey, looks like a lot of folks are still trying to get some seats right now. If you have an empty seat next to you, could you just scoot in? We'd love to get everybody in the room today. Let's stand together as we do that, and we're going to celebrate. We're going to worship our risen king. Come on.
my song will be I'm living in freedom You've taken my burdens away Jesus forever My song will be only for you For the cross that you bore And the debt that you paid For the victory you've won over death and the grave this is the reason I sing For the hope that you give And the joy that you bring For the promise that heaven is waiting for me This is the reason I sing Come on, let's put our hands together now yeah. I will not be silent Testify of your grace Jesus forever My song will be Only for you For the cross that you bore And the debt that you paid For the victory you won Over death and the grave This is the reason I sing For the whole you pay for the victory you've won over death and the grave this is the reason i sing for the hope that you give and the joy that you bring for the promise that heaven is waiting for me this is the reason i sing for the cross that you bore and the death that you pay for the singing today. Welcome to Rock Harbor. You may be seated. Well, happy Easter. We are so glad that each and every one of you have chosen to be with us today. And um, we know we have some who are out in the lobby today as well. So we want to welcome those who are in the lobby. We're so grateful that uh, you are out there today. My name is Scott and uh, this is Robin. And man, we have a great day planned today. That's right. Hey, if this is your first time, we would love to connect with you. We'd just like to say hi. Uh, at the end of the service, when you exit out the doors, if you turn towards the middle, there is an info center. Um, and we have a gift for you. We'd like to just tell you that we're glad that you're here um, and answer any questions that you have about Rock Harbor Church. Also, to get the most out of your weekend experience, you can download the Rock Harbor app. And for information and inspiration, you can follow us on our social channels at Rock Harbor TV. There was always something changing, right? And uh, actually this weekend, we actually had our first 8 a.m. service ever, our 815. We switched it to 8 a.m. for this weekend, and we're going to keep that moving forward. And you say, well, why would we do that? And I don't know if you know this or not, but sometimes that parking lot, it gets busy. <laughs> 
And you kind of laugh under your breath like, oh, Scott, yes, it does. And so we believe that by maybe having people come a little bit earlier, um, we'll have a little more time for those to get off campus. And then those who are coming to the 945, they'll be able to get on campus and just make a smoother transition for everybody. And if you currently attend the 815, we want to encourage you, if you can stay at that 815 time or 8 8 a.m. time, that'll just help all of us make this a better experience for everyone. That's right. And we hope that you are planning to join us back here next Sunday. We are going to be launching our new message series that we're calling Intentional. We know that spiritual growth doesn't happen by accident. We have to be purposeful in it. So we're going to be looking at our rhythms, our relationships, and seeing if there's ways that we can really dig into deeper spiritual growth. Absolutely. So we're going to stand and we're going to continue to sing here in just a second. But as we do, we want to encourage you, if you could, to, to help us by maybe scooting into the middle a little more. If you have an extra seat, maybe raise your hand as the greeters are coming up and down the aisle. We're trying to still place everybody because we love everybody to possibly be in here if they possibly could. Uh, but we do thank you so much for those who are in the lobby. So let's go ahead and stand if we would at this time. And we're going to continue to sing. Happy Easter. We're so glad that you're here. now is ended in the kingdom of light in the kingdom of light forever under your dominion you're the king of my life you're the king of my life you reign above it all you reign God, you put out your life just to give us new life. Now from the lips of the forgiving, come on, hear an anthem arise. Cause Jesus, you're alive. Oh, you reign above it all. You reign above it all. Over the universe. And
Come on, let's sing that chorus together now, every voice. You reign above it all, you reign above it all. Over the universe and over every heart, there is no higher name. Jesus, you reign above it all. Let all of heaven and the earth erupt in song. Sing hallelujah to the everlasting one. There is no higher name. Jesus, you reign above it all. Amen.
He's our living hope. Lord, we come before you and we just ask in the power and the might of your name, the same name that we can call against darkness, we can ask for your forgiveness, the same one who rose from the dead that you sent, death couldn't keep him. God, we pray for that life today. We pray that many would be found today in you. God, we know you are the hope. When this world passes away and when this world falls short, you're faithful, you keep your promises, and you're full of grace. We receive that grace this morning. It's in the name of Jesus we pray, amen, amen. All right, you may be seated. Excited to be able to spend this time with all of you right here in this room, those of you standing on the walls, and then those of you out in the lobby, if you're in this room, uh, can you say Happy Easter to those that are in the lobby? And those in the lobby, can you say, dang it, we got here a little late or someone took my seat. I was praying for someone and then someone snuck in and took their seat. I'm like, that's a good move right there. So, and I know this, many of you took the shuttle. We can't get them in and out fast enough. There's people everywhere. And so, hey, we, it's our sincere honor that you're here with us. Uh, if you happen to be online, watching online, because we have people that they live in different places, but this is their church home, or they snowbird somewhere, but this is part of it. We are honored that you would spend your Easter uh, with us online. And there is a link below that can help you take any kind of step, because we believe God's going to do something very special in people's heart uh, today, and have been. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but you're the eighth service, but you're my favorite, and so I'm excited about that. Um, <laughs> My name is Keith, and I'm one of the pastors here, and I get the opportunity to be able to share part of this, like, hope that comes in Jesus Christ, that God sent his only son, and no matter what we've done, we've never out his grace. Um, but I do want to start where we're all, like, kind of on the same page. So how many losers are in the house? You identify as a loser. Your bracket's horrible. Your, um, no. I know some of you, and all you do is win, win, win. Yeah, you do. Um, so do I. Uh, but I meant loser like you lose stuff. Who is known for putting things places and not remembering where they are? And they're in your hand. They're in your pocket. They're right, you know. Like I've looked for AirPods while in my ears. Like that makes zero sense. So maybe you've done that. There's a parable, which is a story with a purpose that Jesus shares, which is now Luke 15. But it was an interaction that he had with some religious people and then some irreligious people. And there are three items that he mentions while he's trying to share a point of God's unconditional love and pursuit of us. The first item is that of a sheep. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he's lost one of them, does not leave the 99 in the open country? That open country word, I looked it up in the Greek and it means marsing. So marsing, um, <laughs> One in Marsing that would go after the lost one, that's where they raise sheep, um, until he finds it. So I've never owned sheep. I, I've eaten them. Um, I've wore them, the wool of them, uh, but I've never really been around them. But what they do get a bad like rap, like as the dumbest animal, the dumbest you know, farm animal, and those types of things. But what they do is wander. Like a sheep will follow as they graze. And they're not always aware of like their surroundings or the danger that's around them. What ends up happening is they find them in a place, and this sheep in particular, there's one missing, but the shepherd will go after the one even though he has 99. And before you like start to judge the sheep and like, who would do something like that? Why would they follow their nose? Why is it all about what they eat? Many of you like me, you find yourself at the fridge five and seven times a night and you just look in it. You go to the garage and you just look and you want some Sniggy Snacks. I have my neighbor's garage code. I have found my way over to their house. And I have actually two of my neighbor's garage codes. One of them that's uh, this service or the next one, I'm not sure because he didn't text me back. Um, but anyways, I'd rather tell him in front of a couple thousand people than in the driveway. But he did have some cool ranch Doritos one time. And uh, anyway, so verse, verse number eight talks about the next thing. So sheep gets lost on accident. Like it's an accident. They wander, accident. The next thing is lost in the world because it's a simple coin. But this lady in verse number eight, it says, what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one, does not light a lamp and sweep the entire house, seeking diligently until she finds it. She's got nine coins. What's, I mean, it's just one more. 
But what she's saying here and what Christ is trying to say is that each coin has value. Just like every sheep has value, you have value. And the unconditional love of the one who owns you, the one who created you, the one that designed you for a purpose will chase after you. And when this lady finds it, she celebrates with her friend. When the shepherd finds the sheep, he places it over his shoulders and he comes back and celebrates it. Do you know that there is someone that's looking for you and they're looking on the horizon for you to come home. And that's this last thing that Jesus shares and it's that of a lost son, okay? A son known in scripture as a prodigal. Prodigal is not a common used word as much now, but a prodigal is a wayward or lost or wasteful living. This son was lost on purpose, okay? This wasn't on accident like the other items. This was on purpose, verse 11. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that's coming to me. And then this father did something that Middle Eastern dads do not do. He divided his property between them. This is Jesus trying to tell in context, in their culture, this is the not an ordinary father here. I mean, if your kid asks for something, they ask for their inheritance early. They're nine. Hey, I want what's coming to me right now. That's when you're at the moment, you're like, get over here, let's go to the garage. I'm ripping the braces right off your teeth. <laughs> those were your inheritance and I'm taking them back at this point. <laughs> but it's one of those things where this wasn't a nine-year-old, this was an older kid. He was old enough to go to a far country because he says, that that's what scripture says that he does. And Jesus is trying to share this point that this is something that was not common, probably wouldn't be granted, but was granted. But in asking, this son was essentially saying, I wish you were dead. I want what's coming to me and I want it now. And I want my inheritance, which I could enjoy in the later years of life with you as my father the blessings of all that you have earned and worked for, we could spend that together and instead I want it now because I want to use it for myself. There's incredible sadness that comes over the father. His heart is broken. Verse 13, the younger son gathers all that he had. He took a journey to a far country and there he squandered it. His property was wasted in reckless living and then he had spent everything. A severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. Then he was longing to be fed with the pods of these pigs, like the same food that the pigs ate. He's like, I just want that, but no one gave him jack squat. No one gave him anything. I can't even imagine where this guy you know, what he looked like, and by the time he rolls in, and he went from having everything to having nothing. He went from believing the promise that he would gain freedom by getting away and taking what was his, and in reality, he gained chains. The problem is, he had a dissatisfied heart. The dissatisfied heart led to a disappointed life. In his heart, when it talks of a far country, yes, he went there geographically, but more importantly, it's talking about a far place in his heart. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where you're kind of dissatisfied with some things. I'm not gonna ask for a show of hands so you're safe, but I will tell you, I've been in that place where I'm frustrated with my kids, I'm frustrated in my marriage, I'm frustrated in things, I'm bothered about something. And there comes a point sometimes when my wife will be like, are you okay? And what I often realize is, yes, there's some things that happened in this life, but the dissatisfaction is a soured heart. And it's about a relationship between me and God. Like, I let my heart get to a negative place rather than, God, I want a clean heart. I want a pure heart before you. So if you're in a place of that, just like be very, very careful. A dissatisfied heart will lead you to a disappointed life. And that bitterness and that frustration it pours out on other people. This kid, young man, probably upper teens, lower 20s, he's now found himself in a place and, and what the world promises it never delivers on. Like when sin promises you success but delivers failure, when it promises life but delivers death according to Romans 6, for the wages and the payment of our sin is death. Sin promises of freedom, but ends in chains. 
He's found himself in this bad place. He thought he would find himself. He actually lost himself, and he longs to be back home. This is a place of him realizing this isn't good. This is a bad place to be, but he's in this pig pen. The only place he can look is up, and honestly, that's where a lot of God does, a lot of miraculous work that God does, it happens in that place where there's nowhere to look but to him. It's where he does his miraculous work. Verse 17 says, but when he came to himself, this is the moment he's sitting there and he's realizing, like, this isn't all it's added up to me. I fall into this pride and arrogance. I had, whether it was women or money or experiences, like it ran out. Those things that promised, like, enjoyment have now become an enslavement. That relationship that you long for Maybe has created trauma in your life and you thought it was good and you wanted it so bad and so you offered yourself or you sacrificed some things and now you found yourself in a place of going, I can't believe I should have listened. I sensed the Lord. I knew this, but I thought it's going to get better. I can change them. And it's become a source of pain and he's in this place. He's sitting there and he's, I mean, mama ain't happy. Daddy ain't happy, my life's crappy. It doesn't say that in the Bible, but I'm pretty sure that's what he was thinking. Verse 18, I will arise, I'll go to my father, I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven, I've sinned before you. He's practicing what he's gonna apologize. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. This is him saying, okay, it is time to repent. I have to humble myself. I've been going this way, I was going to the far country, but I'm going to humble myself be right before God. I'm no longer, I've sinned against God and you. That's an important piece of apology. If you have a relationship that needs to be repaired and there's been a sin against God, make it right there first. Don't just go to the approval of that person. They may need an apology. They may deserve one. But they can't forgive you of your sins. Only God can, and he knows that. And so he's made right with God and he's ready to repent. That is a change of heart that takes place. He arises and goes, came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, I love this, because he doesn't know how his dad's gonna react, but he just wants to be in his presence. Not knowing the grace his father has for him, he just wants to be in his presence. His father sees him a long ways off and he felt compassion towards him. He ran, he embraced him, he kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. And the father pretty much interrupts him and says, hey servants, bring quickly the best robe, put it on him. Bring quickly a ring and place it on his hand. Put shoes on his feet, bring the fattened calf and kill it, let's eat and celebrate, and this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost, but now he's been found, and they began to celebrate. The son that was lost, not on accident, not in the world, yes, in the world, but not really in the world, like being passed over for a promotion and some things didn't really go his way and other people are getting the credit, but no, lost on purpose sinfully turned his back on his father, asked for this. That son's now been found. Lost on purpose, but also lost, but found. This is not an ordinary love from an ordinary father. No, Jesus is telling a story of a not so ordinary God, our heavenly father that gave everything in his son. See, the picture that we get here is something a Middle Eastern dad would never do is give an inheritance like that and then receive in grace. But additionally, that father would not run in public. It is not cultural for Middle Eastern dads to run in public. I think I might be Middle Eastern, I'll just be honest with you. I hate running. But he's not gonna run in public, but no, his son's coming home. He's been looking. Do you know how many times he probably looked down that road and is like, is it him? No, it's Amazon. Is it him? No, it's not him. Hiking up that tunic, spanks are showing, and he is running to his son, kisses him, hugs him. You know, whenever a child or a person was excommunicated from a community, they would take pitchers, pitchers that you generally drank out of, they would take it out to the gates, and they would smash it and leave the pottery on the ground, thus always saying, that person is never allowed back here again. Instead, what does he do? 
He says, bring those pitchers and let's fill them with the wine. What happens when they break those pitchers on the gates is when the neighbor sees that person coming. When other people see him coming, they start to stone that person. They detain them. They don't want them to go inflict any other pain. Because why the neighbors would also want that done if someone was excommunicated from their property or their community, they represent one another. They fight for one another. But you realize the love this father had, he would have embraced his son. He would have then received the stones that those people would have been throwing. And guess what? That's exactly what Jesus Christ did on the cross as he received the whipping, as he received the beating, as he received the spit and the mocking and the crown of thorns and the spear in his side so that you and I, we could never pay for our own sin, but a perfect son of God could, and he did. And that's what this father, that's the picture that Jesus is sharing to this group of people. And one of the best parts about it, in fact, it's my life verse. They killed the fatted calf and they ate it and they celebrated, I love beef. I love Jesus and I love beef. And I'll just tell you this, I was raised on a farm. Uh, we grew up with cattle. I didn't even know steak was a really big deal, but it's a huge deal. You ever done rockabye ribeye? I did it the other night. Look at this picture. This is in the <laughs> dining room two days ago. I go, because I have a friend group, and we're called the, the Beef Brothers, and we're in this text thread. And it's like when stuff's on sale, and it's like, dude, Fred Meyer and Albertsons, four ninety seven with the app, digital coupon. This is what's happening. And one of my friends sent this cute little picture of his little six-pound prime rib. And I was like, oh, that's so cute. Lame. And then I go up there, and my wife is with me, and we were literally just trying to buy Easter candy for the kids. But then I'm like, hey, I got this deal with the Beef Bros, this silent you know, thread that happens. And then I walk up, and I see, well, there's about well, seven pounds and eight pounds. I could one-up my friend by a pound. But why when I could walk right up to the butcher? And I said, bro, what do you got in the back? And he looks at me and said, what do you want? And I said, I want that ribeye, you know, the coupon, digital coupon. He goes, 23 pounds is coming at you. <laughs> Boom, comes out with half a cow, 28 pounds. Glory to God, he is risen, killing the fatted calf. So good. So good. Every time, like ever since I got to put it in the garage fridge, I, I just realized my neighbor has my garage code. Um, <laughs> but I put it in the garage fridge, laid hands on it. And I was just like, I'm going to see you on Monday. Got to preach another one, but I'm going to see you Monday. Why do I tell you all that? Not so you can get a deal at Albertsons. Not so you can get a deal at Fred Meyer, because I'm just going to be honest with you. I said the same thing on Friday night. They have no more meat in their entire department. <laughs> at the service the other night, a baby cried right at this point. And I called him a vegetarian. <laughs> but anyways, um, and then I said... More for me and stuff, and people left the church. It was totally fine. Um, but I tell you that because we hear that story and we're like, man, that's, that's the love. That, that, I'm really thankful that kid was received back because think of the years that they had as a family together. Like, I love that story. But then the same people of us don't realize that, that there's a heavenly father that looks on the horizon for us to come home. We can't receive that grace and we don't think we're worthy. And September 21st, 1997, there was a two year old boy named Guo Shenzhen. And he was abducted in his home in China. His mom was cooking, and right in the doorway of the house, kids would play out there. And he was kidnapped. Well, this is during the one child policy that China had for decades. They estimate up to 70,000 boys were abducted because people wanted boys annually. So this was just another kid that had been taken. But they filed a report and the guilt that the mother had. And, but the family got together and law enforcement started to look. But it didn't, the looking and the seeking didn't last long by most people because there were so many kids that were missing. This was one more child. And the family continued to look and then the search efforts were done by everyone except for the dad the dad didn't stop no the dad had a motorbike got a map and he put flags on the back of his motorcycle and he started to drive 
had a picture of his son and had description items like, hey, he has a scar on his left pinky toe. If you find him, if you know anything, here's who you can contact. This is the area town that he was once in. He began to drive and drive and he went through flag after flag. Following different clues that he would get. Chase him down and try to figure out, is this the one? Found himself all over the place. In fact, he went through 10 motorcycles. 10. 311,000 miles. And a decade goes by. And people are starting to wonder, like, why are you still looking for clues? I mean, your boy's got to be at least 12 years by now, and you don't even know what he looks like anymore. And there's so many kids that have been taken. Why are you doing this? I mean, people started mocking him. He had near-death experiences, but he never stopped. Went off his bike, broke his bones. He was on roads that he should have never gone down. I can't imagine how many tires that he went through. Clue after clue, trip after trip, weekend after weekend, the mocking starts coming. You're never going to find him. And then in 2015, there was a movie that was made. It was called Love and Lost. This, this movie depicted the relentless love of a father. But then the movie ended with an unexpected ending. The son was never found. There was no reunion. Now the love of a father was shared in the story, but there was no reunion. All the miles, all the motorcycles, it's been a couple of decades, you're still looking. And after 23 years, the son was found. Two and a half years ago, the son was found. Tire after tire and trip after trip and the embrace that the father was able to grant as everyone watched. The shame that the mother bore to be able to hug her son and say, I'm so sorry, and him go, it's okay. It's just fine. We're here now. To think that someone would look for a kid that long that's the love of a father and we hear about the father as Christ shares that that looks on the horizon for his son to come home and then we hear this story and we connect with it deeply why because we wonder how many tires would people go through to would anybody ever drive that long would anybody look for more than a couple of decades when everyone else quits is there everyone anyone else that's going to keep looking for me and I want you to know the answer is yes. And yeah, there's a stack of wore out tires. But Jesus Christ, it's not about the tires that were wore out and all that he did. No, his body was wore out on a cross for you. Just like the steel comes out of the tire. I mean, his flesh was tore to bear the sins of the world, but yet he rose from that death. He bore the sin of the world. While you were on his heart, he was on a cross. And here's the problem. You think, oh, it's eight billion people and I'm just one. He'll chase after the one. He'll come after the one. You're here in this moment right now. There is a reunion that awaits you. A homecoming that is so undeserved. And Jesus Christ, God sent his only son on the cross for you and I. And he rose from death, conquering sin so that every single one of us could have life in him. He'll go to any length for you to know. He's brought you to this place to know. He's brought you to this time for you to go, I feel like I've outsinned his grace. And he is literally going, embrace me. Come to me. All you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you a rest. You haven't outsend my grace. I've been waiting for you. I've been chasing after you. I've been looking for you. And today is a day of reunion. He's the only one that can forgive our sins. He's the only one that can make us right with God. Will you receive that embrace for an unexpected homecoming? Confess that 
I've been a criminal I've stolen your breath and sang my own song and Lord I confess that I'm far from innocent the shackles I wear I'm bought on my own Scarlet sins at a crimson cost He nailed my debt to that old rugged cross An empty slave at the empty grave Thank God that stone was rolled Before Christ, I was lost in needing the approval of others. Before Jesus, I was lost in having control in my eating disorder and finding control in things of the world. I was lost in chasing ambition and living for the approval of others. Before Jesus, I struggled with codependency, substance use, and addiction. Before Jesus, I was stuck seeking fame and notoriety and wealth. Before Jesus, I was lost in addiction to alcohol. Before Jesus, I was lost in a sinful pursuit of things to fill an emptiness inside of me. Lord, I confess that I've been the pot of gold made for your house. But I walk my own road In Jesus' care After Christ found me, I found freedom and peace, knowing that I didn't have to go through my struggles alone. After Christ found me, I experienced a stillness and a wholeness like never before. After Jesus found me, I found freedom. After Christ found me, I realized that being in Christ, I can rest in Him, and He'll put me wherever He wants me to be. After Christ found me, I experienced a profound freedom and wholeness. Because of Jesus, the risen Savior, I have been found. I have been found. Because of Jesus, the risen Savior, I have been found. I have been found. I have been found. I have been found. I see bright currents and robes draped over the ashes. A wide open tomb where there should be a casket. The children are singing and dancing and laughing. The Father is welcoming. This is our homecoming. Roses in bloom, pushed up from the embers. Rivers of tears flow from good times remembered. Families are singing and dancing and laughing. The Father is welcoming. This is our homecoming.
deserved homecoming, the graciousness of God. You can be seated for just another moment. See, we hear this, and here's what I know. Some of you, you were lost on accident. Like there's, there's been some stuff happen in your life, and you're a pretty good person. Some of you, you're, you're wandering. You're lost in the world. There's been some stuff that I guess it could be qualified as sin, but you're not ill-willed. And then there's some that are lost on purpose, and you're going, man, if people really knew me, if people really know what I've done, and I want to say to every one of us that's, every one of us that's been lost, like, God knows all of it. Some of you, you're students, and you're like, if my parents really knew, I'm kind of living a double life. Some of you, you've turned your back on people, and you've left some relationships in a mess, and the unconditional love of God loves us even when we've sinned, even when we've divorced, even when we've hurt, even when we've been hurt. The unconditional love of God is so different than the love that we have. See, when Jesus shared that parable, that story with a purpose, he was talking to irreligious and religious people, the same people in the room. And the religious people were like, why are they there? Why are they here? The religious people thought they had it all figured out, but the relationship is really what it's all about. It's about a relationship with the Lord. It's about a relationship with the Father. And the irreligious is like, ah, I don't like... Surely I've out sinned his grace and I probably shouldn't be here. And I hear that and I want that for other people, but I don't know that I'm good enough for that. And the father waits and he looks on the horizon and he longs to say, that is my son, that is my daughter. They once were lost, they now are found. They once were dead and now they've been made alive. So you didn't come to Easter service to hear about heaven and hell, I'm pretty sure. Like it's Easter Sunday, you talk about heaven only, but not heaven and hell. And when you look across religions and you look across different faiths that are out there, there's a lot of false teaching. And today you also didn't come to go, hey, Keith, Keith like, tell us about all the false teachers that are out there. But I'll tell you this. People make religions and make different faiths and different walks in order to help themselves feel a certain way. So from everything to there's multiple heavens, everything to like there is a place that you go to wait and then someday after a period of time, you'll be granted into heaven. Or you can get baptized for this person and grant them this. Or if you pray enough in this name and do these good works, or surely your good will outweigh your bad. Or what if you just believe a little bit of everything, which is enough, just be a good person, be better than that person. Here's the problem. It's not true. And it's absolutely unkind to keep saying like, hey, it's gonna be okay and just love one another and let's all be in this together. Because the truth is we're not all in it together. And we're not all spending eternity the same place. And for those of you that have received the gift of Jesus Christ, this earth is the closest to hell you will ever get. But sadly, with the same amount of emotion, of sadness that I have, of joy that my eternity is secure in heaven, if you are not in Jesus Christ, this earth is the closest to heaven that you will ever get. And it's really, really important because some of you feel like you've out the grace of God and some of you feel like you're kind of good enough and you're kind of rolling the dice and you know somebody that's a pastor or you know someone or you think it's gonna end up being okay or in the next life, we get one life, one life. And the Bible says it's appointed to man once to die and after that the judgment. We will be judged in our life what we do for Jesus Christ. You know what he did for us? He gave all. God so loved you that he sent his only son. And there's a great chasm between us and God and heaven and hell. 
And the only way that I can cross to life is through the grace that Jesus Christ grants me through his death on the cross, but most importantly, his resurrection from death so that I could have life. It's only him, and he's waiting for an embrace. And God is saying, come home, but there's only one way, there's only one truth, and there's only one life, and it comes in my son. So whether on accident, whether on purpose, whether just lost in the world, like you can be found and today can be your day of salvation. Today can be that moment where you're not just one in eight billion people and this doesn't make a lot of sense for you to stop and go, the God in heaven who created me and he created me to be perfect, but I sinned. He wants me. He longs for me. He's waiting and he's looking on the horizon and he's saying to you, son, daughter, today come home. Son, daughter, you're tired. You're exhausted. You've been religious. Come to me for a relationship. You've been trying to prove that you're better than this person or you've wanted people to believe this about you. You're looking for the approval of man. Come to me. I know all that you've done and I died. I forgave, my, and my son forgave a sinner next to him on a cross. I can forgive you, just come home. He doesn't say, go shower, go shave, and then I'll give you a hug. He doesn't say, how much money you have left in your pocket after you spent it in the world. No, he doesn't say that. He doesn't say, hey, work for me for about 20 years, and then I'll get you the robe, and then I'll get you the ring, and then we'll have a feast. No, he says, we're having a feast, not a funeral. He's saying, there's a table, and there's room for you, and we have saved your seat ever since you walked away. But just simply confessing sin and calling on the name of Jesus Christ, salvation can come. There's room for you to be found. There's still time left for you to be found. Would you bow your heads with me right now? I absolutely believe that the Holy Spirit is working in your heart. And there are some of you, you are doing battle right now. And my prayer is, is that you would literally raise your hands and surrender to God. You would say, I'm done fighting my own battle. I want him to fight it for me. I could never pay. I could never earn. I could never perform my way to him. But I receive his grace. I receive his forgiveness that right now in this moment would be your moment of salvation. It would be your moment of embrace, an undeserved homecoming. Today is the day to be found in Jesus Christ. I want to invite you right now to pray with me. Lord, thank you. Thank you for sending your only son, a gift I did not deserve. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sin. My sin puts you on that cross. But your life, resurrection, it brings me life and I claim that in your name. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. Please save me. I'm home. Thank you for loving me. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Man, I want to ask if you would keep your heads bowed for just a moment. An important question I do want to ask is no one is looking around. I know that's a lot of people. So even if you're in the lobby, even if you're online, I get like, I'm just asking that you would just give some privacy in this moment. Jesus Christ went publicly to a cross, but the cool thing, he also went publicly <laughs> after he resurrected. And I want to ask you if you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ for the first time today, to raise your hand, to just publicly raise your hand. I surrender my life to Jesus Christ. Every single service today, we've had dozens of people, so I wanna ask, if you surrender your life to Jesus Christ today for the first time, would you raise your hand? Raise your hand. Look in every single section of people. Okay, I'm still looking up here. Yep, I see. Praise God, praise God. You can put your hands down. Can we celebrate there's new life in Jesus Christ? And many people, Went from dead to alive, lost to found. I want to encourage you to take a bold step. You probably came with someone today. You're probably friends with someone. If you would like to share that with us, we have a next step card. Because here's the thing. We don't just get together to go back and do the same thing the next week. We get together to be changed by Jesus Christ. So every week at Rock Arbor is a next step. 
I would encourage you to take that and you can mark that on your next step card, that piece of paper you were given when you came in. If you have the app, if you're watching online, there's a link below. Let us know. We want to help you in that journey. God has an incredible plan for you. He created you for a purpose. Let us know. I pray to receive Christ as my Savior. Surrender my life to Him. I have questions about that, or I want to engage in something here at Rock Harbor. I'm going to grow spiritually. This is a day of new life. This is a moment of new life in Him. Would you stand with us as we continue to sing about our risen King? Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together like this. Hey! Remember those walls that we called sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. Those walls are rebel now. Remember those giants we called death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our way. But he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. Come on, if you believe this today, let's sing it out. This is our God, this is who he is, he loves us. This is our God, this is what he does, he saves us. He bore the cross, beat the grave, let heaven and earth proclaim. This is our God, King Jesus. Yeah. Remember that fear that took So weak that we could barely pray. But he heard every word, every whisper. Yes, he did. Whoa. Now those altars in the wilderness tell the story. So glad that you're with us today. I want to remind you we have services uh, next week, so we'd love to see you next Sunday. 
Have a great rest of your day celebrating our risen king. We love you all. We'll see you next week.